Welcome back to We Still Like Each Other, the podcast. I'm Travis. And I'm Stephanie. And this is the podcast where we show that the honeymoon stage can last forever. And ever. And even ever. If, even if we disagree. And we will. <laughs> and even if um, I'm spicy to you on the pod and, you know, people think I'm mad at you. Yeah, yeah. I still like him. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Yeah, we got a lot of, um, is Stephanie okay messages from yeah. last week's episode? I was concerned for you, too. <laughs> I was fine. I was, like, rethinking things in my head, like, did, did, did something happen? Did I miss something? I just felt like it was a coincidence that, you know, a couple of issues we've had came up. <laughs> Look, at, He's, like, looking at Okay. You know, okay. like, it was just coincidental that, like, everything we spoke about, I kind of had a jab at you. Okay. And that was only in the beginning. Uh, yeah, it was only a beginning. It was like when we were recapping our week. When I was, um, I made a little short reel of her being spicy with me. And in her defense, it was all in the beginning. I didn't find it. Like once you took your jacket off. Yeah. You were a little more. To find. Maybe yeah. you were hot. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I was too hot. <laughs> spicy hot. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> possibly. Possibly. Um. So... I wanted to kind of just recap our week a little bit. Okay. Um, How was your week? My week has been pretty good. I did want to mention, because last episode I talked about how I made your appointment for the dermatologist. Um, after recording that episode, we actually hung out with your brother and his wife and um, your cousins. And we were talking about like needing to go to the doctor and getting our bodies checked every year and, you know, taking those annual physicals very seriously. So I went ahead and scheduled your appointment because Travis has never, ever been to the doctor since we've been together. You I've, have I've been to the, <laughs> I haven't had a physical in a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to the doctor for things like things that like if something was hurting or if. Yeah, if, but that's like urgent care. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. haven't had like your doctor that like you know personally that knows you that does a full blood work and panel a full physical you haven't done that yeah that's true so we scheduled one for you because i love you i appreciate you and we got to take care of each other right yeah so uh, that means the least he could do is have a hundred dollars in his pocket <laughs> <laughs> um i appreciate it <laughs> um and you know i do care about my health and, you know, I'm not going to make any excuses as to why I haven't had a, a physical in a long time. But mm -hmm. I will say that, you know, just those conversations with my family, conversations with you. And recently I had a, a conversation with a close friend of mine and he's going through some health um, health concerns. And it's kind of like a light bulb moment, mm -hmm. you know, not only for you and Eli, we have a son coming I need to, you know, health is wealth. As corny as it sounds, mm -hmm. it's it's true. Yeah. Um, so I'd rather be better safe than sorry. Make sure everything's okay. Make sure I can still be here for you all. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's keep rocking. I was going to ask you, do you feel, because I, you know, I made those appointments for you and I don't have any resentment towards you about it. Like the fact that I had to do it. But do you feel like there needs to be a little bit more like independence like when it comes to things like that? You know, it's funny because before I met you, when I was in my previous relationship, I was on top of those things. So what you think? What you're trying to say? I'm not saying it's any fault of your own. I'm just saying that I I feel like I had more, um, I was more independent in that sense. I was making my dentist appointment. I was making my physical appointment. Did I make you codependent? I think you might have made me codependent. <laughs> and, wow. Um. I don't, you know, view it as you will. Mm -hmm. I can still step up and take care of things for myself. Um, you know, you make the appointment and now it's up to me to get my ass in the chair or mm -hmm. get my ass in the car and get myself there. Um, I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's a bad thing that I used to do those things when I was with someone else. Uh, no, I just like I like even coming back to the whole cooking for yourself thing It's like I want to know that. God forbid something ever happened to me, like you be able to take care of yourself and take care of our kids, you know? Um, so you're capable. I am capable. All right. 
That's fine. I don't mind making the appointments you as know, long as you have a hundred dollars in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking about today when we were building the bed. Um, we we got a new. We're trying to downsize our room, I guess you would say. Yeah, because we're trying to basically. Our bedroom is going to also be our nursery because we don't have space to have a nursery. Um, and we have enough space in our bedroom, but our furniture was kind of bulky. So we replaced our nightstands and now we replaced our bed frame. What were you going to say? No, nothing with that. But oh, okay. I was going to say, and when I was building it, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, I, I know how to do things. I'm handy. I'm smart. Mm -hmm. The There was a thing, something that popped in my head was we bought something for the baby from one of your friends we drove the queens mm -hmm. and you always jokingly say this but it kind of digs a little uh -huh. where you're like you know he's not that handy but he's super smart mm -hmm. and then <laughs> we were i was putting the the what would we buy for the baby again um a bassinet we bought the best i was putting the bassinet he couldn't figure out how to break it down i broke it down quick and then he was like you sure he's not handy he's and i'm and that moment stuck with me because he's like i i know how to do shit but you always, you have this image of me where I'm just kind of like, he's smart, but, you know, don't put a screwdriver around him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In my defense, it's because you don't take initiative when it comes to things like that. Like today, for example, we ordered the bed. It's been here like a week. This motherfucker, I just remembered. <laughs> <laughs> No, so but we're getting you're gonna, ready. You're going to hear this story and then be like, I can see what happened. I can see why. So Saturdays is our podcast day. I actually have a girls night later tonight. That's why I have this like dark, you know, spooky makeup because it's like a witch's night out. W bitches? Witches. Witches. Witches night out. Okay. But, you know, bitches is fine. <laughs> um, and, you know, so we're like, all right, we should get in the shower and do X, Y, and Z. But I been eyeing the bed frame and you know i'm trying not to be pushy and i'm like hoping you just decide and remember like the bed frame needs to you. be built let me pause you uh -huh. we had a conversation where she said she wanted to look into getting painters because the building has painters she wanted basically the whole apartment touched up mm -hmm. so in my mind and this is why communication is important mm -hmm. in my mind i'm like why would we build anything until we figure out what's the painting situation mm -hmm. so it's not that i was like oh that's gonna be that that furniture piece is gonna become furniture in the box like that's not <laughs> what i was thinking but you know you continue with again you didn't communicate you didn't ask me i didn't communicate it with you whatever so then today, he's like, you know, let's get in the shower. I said, could we make the bed first? And he says, yes. And I get the language. I said, can I? Can we make the bed first? So, so we go in the room. <laughs> and I'm like clearing off the bed like I normally do. And she's trying to like help. And I'm like, no, I got this. <laughs> and she's like, okay. <laughs> I'm dusting the bed off like I normally do with the sheet, beating the bed. And I'm starting to fix it. And she goes. <laughs> I said, I didn't mean literally make the bed. I meant build the new bed. <laughs> like, but it's also not... The language, the way I Language, said it. but it's also not uncommon for you to say, come with me, let's go make the bed. Yeah, but it, the way I asked, <laughs> like how often don't I just make the bed? Or I'm like, oh, I'm going to fix the bed real quick. But you also, on the flip side, have said, just come with me or I got to go to the back. Just, you know, stay with me. No. No? I just couldn't believe you thought I She meant. was beside herself <laughs> that i misunderstood that i would ask permission like could we make the bed first for me to just literally make i the thought bed. she wanted to straighten up a little but that was my thinking oh she wants to straighten up a little before we get in the shower okay but whatever it and then <laughs> and then this is the part where i say you're not handy and like your facial expressions and the way you act because he looked so upset when he realized what i actually wanted like he was taking deep breaths, looking around the room, because as staring at the bed, looking down like, oh, I got to really build this bed right she's now. She's exaggerating. Whatever motion she's saying I took, it, <laughs> that whole thing must have lasted five seconds. But to her, it was like five minutes of me just looking miserable. I Because you mentally prepare yourself for things <laughs> you're going to do. I know every human listening to this and watching mentally prepares themselves it's like you know today i gotta go grocery shopping i gotta go here i gotta go there you mentally you get yourself psyched up no one wants to be outside the house mm -hmm. so if i i just had to quickly psych myself up to like all right i gotta knock this out 
And I am not a smiler and builder. That's not me. Yeah. No one is. I don't. Anyone who is needs to get checked out. They're a fucking serial <laughs> killer if you're just smiling and building. You see, I'm not a smiler and builder, but I like to get shit done. Like when the bed frame came, I hated walking by the box for like a week. You know, so it's not that I'm like, I love building. But had I not been pregnant, I would have just did the shit myself because the box being there was annoying. Okay. Well. And we've been talking about how quickly time is going. That's true. So the bedroom getting done, even though we have technically 10 weeks to go, it's going to fly by. The bigger I get, the less likely I'm going to want to do things. I'm going to want to build. I'm going to want to fix things. I'm going to get more tired. So I've been wanting to, as things come in, just get them done. So that way, okay. Now that I see the bed, I know what's next. So it being there a week felt like we wasted a week, you know? But it's fine. <laughs> it's built. All, it's built. All is, all is well. And I'm sorry it bothers you that I say you're not handy. It does because I, I know what I'm capable of. I, I, I'm, I may not be a, um, I, not, I may not be as proactive as you like, but okay. I, I feel like I rise to the occasion when I'm putting, when the spotlight is on me. Trav gets it done. Okay. I changed my Instagram name. <laughs> Trav gets it done. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. So then if my friends are like, can Travis come help me build? Yeah. No shirt. <laughs> You'll be with no shirt? Yeah. Oh, look get, at you. You night. feeling confident now with no shirt? Before, you didn't like not being in a shirt. Yeah. I don't really think about it's it. because I got you the dermatologist. <laughs> <laughs> she'll, take, she'll take credit for anything. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right what else were we talking about our week right our week so the bed the doctor um anything on your mind um yes so was it last yeah right after last right week? after last week so i did <laughs> i um i did a little outfit change right after our podcast last week because my close friend sunny who is the owner and creator of save mankind you'll always see me wearing his um his clothing he had a little pop-up event in brooklyn mm -hmm. and um yeah it was it was nice to go there it was nice to support my friend mm -hmm. felt really good um saw some family saw some people who i've been like social media friends with and it was nice to meet them in person yeah. um but it also got me like just reflecting about friendships and how sometimes you fall out of friendships sometimes you disconnect um got like a little not at in that moment but you know at work the next few days i was like reflecting on that and it, it definitely popped up in my mind um I, I feel like adult friendships um not only adult friendships but i mean friendships you had maybe as a younger adult even a teenager but then as you evolve into adulthood sometimes those things that made you really close friends aren't there anymore or like you change a little bit you know yeah. there's this like negativity around changing but like if you're just growing up and aging without actually changing who you are as a person, I feel like it's a waste of your life. So changing is not necessarily a bad thing. I used to say I have like um, outside of school friends and school friends because mm -hmm. like friends out of convenience. Mm. Like we wouldn't take the extra step to plan anything outside of school. But when we were in school, mm -hmm. you're my best bud. You know, we're r roaming the hallways mm -hmm. together. But then it stopped at. 2 30 when we left yeah. or and you're like at graduation like oh my god we're gonna hang out for sure and then you never see each other yeah. again there's um you know thank god for social media yeah because i you know it as, although it has all this negative things that come with it it's very positive in the sense that i get to stay connected to people mm -hmm. i wouldn't have to wouldn't have otherwise yeah. like i don't i didn't even go to my um what is it 10 year reunion reunion I don't know what it was going on in my life at the time, but I just didn't feel there was no sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. I know what's going on with Rebecca. <laughs> I'm just throwing out a random name, yeah. but I know what's going on with her because we follow each other on yeah, yeah. Facebook. Um, Got it. But yeah, you know, the older the older you get, and then disconnecting from people who you would have swore would have been, you know, lifelong friendships is sometimes it's it's difficult and sad. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you i know we were talking about um a couple of episodes ago about closure but in like romantic relationships do you feel like friendships sometimes like lack closure or is it necessary or not necessary I, I th so i'm thinking of like one friendship in particular and we never had a conversation it's just we grew apart like our our interest didn't align anymore things they had going on with their life i d didn't agree with the 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 their goals or lack of ambition it just didn't align with what but I, this is just a person that you're kind of distant from but like if they reached out tomorrow i would love to talk to them you would still talk to, it's not like a technically officially a lost friend and that's why i say like closure is iffy because i feel like if you have closure you kind of close that door and that's not necessarily something i would want to do i guess with me is because um i recently like ended a friendship like officially like it was like, fuck out of here, I'm not talking to you, type shit. So that one's more of a like, not only did we drift apart, but it was like a, you know, a disagreement, I guess. Um, and sometimes I'm like, I kind of want to explain how I was feeling because me deciding to end the friendship, we were having a disagreement in the moment, but that wasn't, that was that just, wasn't it. that wasn't it. It was a, it was things adding up over the past like year at least, and maybe I could go back two years, and someone who I felt we bonded so much, like so many things in common. We saw life similarly. We had um similar like just a lot of things that we were tight. Like we were like, oh my god, like we're good friends, and in this, I feel like just in the past two years, like. It was like she was oil and I was milk and everything was a, a disagreement. Every single thing. Like even things that would pop up in, in the news or pop culture or anything, we disagreed on it. You think that's healthy? I don't, which is why I... But I'm, so, I mean, I'm saying in the sense that obviously it didn't work for your friendship. Because mm -hmm. you kind of have to... You, you know, we, we spoke about on our social media about, you know, we're not going to agree on everything. Yeah. But we're not so far apart. That on, we disagree on everything. Yeah, we're not so far apart. Yeah, it's not. You know, she's a Trump supporter, and I'm just yeah. like on the other side. It's not that far apart. Yeah. Um. But you think that makes it more difficult to be friends with someone if you are far apart on things? Absolutely. Even in a relationship, if we disagreed on every single thing and the big stuff, because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of our disagreements were on big stuff. Like, we had an argument about my daddy issues. We had an argument about my identity as a black woman. We had an argument about um, money and America and privilege. And, you know, is it white privilege or is it just capitalism? Or, like, if I would talk about my debt goals and, you know, paying off debt, Oh, capitalism X, Y, and Z. Um, for Eli's birthday, I set up his college fund. So I sent it to people like who would want to get him gifts. And I wasn't saying don't get him a gift put in his college fund. But I was like, you know, make a small donation if you um, want to make, you know, five, ten bucks. She was like, I'm not giving him no college donation. I'm going to give him something he can enjoy. You know, like just ne everything I did. It was like I got pushed back. Everything was like negative. Instead of maybe trying to see it your way or yeah. or even just obliging you. You know, like Or if, if she wasn't gonna put money in, she didn't even have to make a statement about that. She could have just not done it. And did what she wanted to do. And did what she wanted to do, but she had to make it a she had to make it known that she just disagrees with the fact that I'm saving for college for him, you know, which is like weird as shit anyway. But um at times when I, the reason I br brought up closure is because I wasn't always honest about how I felt after all of those disagreements. It's like we had them and then we would, you know, we just talk like normal. So I wonder if in her mind, she knows it was more than just that last disagreement. Like no. it was just things adding up, but um, yeah. No, I think arguments or, you know, discourses is, is mm -hmm. healthy. Um, it's how you maneuver after knowing not to take it too far or knowing not to push certain buttons. Um, 
I'm thinking about like friendships I've had that have ended. I don't think it's ever been like one, like you said, it's never been one thing. It's like just that build up, that build up, that lack of respect from the other side. Like I'm, I'm so open to conversations. I'll have a conversation with anyone and just fucking lay it all out there. And, you know, I'm, I can say what's on my mind, but when you're not getting it back, it's like, what mm-hmm. what are we doing here? And then, then you start to think, am I viewing this friendship as more than it? Maybe it's just one of those convenience things. Mm-hmm. Give and take, you know, um, what, what's that saying? You're only, if you're not useful, you're useless. Mm. And that's what it starts to feel like. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, I'm appreciative of the people I do have in my life that I do call friends and I pour one out for people who were former friends mm-hmm. and it's sad and, but, um, you know, I'm not gonna let it take up too much energy in my life. Yeah. And I'm always here. I'm always open to have a conversation yeah. with anyone. I agree because just like old friendships fizzle out, new ones form that like are amazing and that's life, right? And, like, sometimes you think, like, for example, um, me and Irene, like, I consider her a really good friend now. And we've only really been really talking and hanging out the like past year. year, year and a half or so. Um, and I knew her since high school. And sometimes I'll have those moments like, oh, I wish we would have connected. I wish we knew about our stories being so similar or these other ways where our lives could have, we could have built a friendship before. But then I think... Everything happens for a reason. Like we we became friends at like a right the right moment in life, you know. Yeah, I that it's funny you say that because I have a friend who's similar to that. That we knew each other in high school, and it's now that we're in our thirties that we communicate more. Mm-hmm. We're talking, we're having deep conversations. I'll I'll say his name because he listens and supports us a lot. A lot, um, Dexter. Uh, we speak a lot, and mm-hmm. you know he's a big supporter of ours, and we weren't tight in high school but we were cool cordial um and it's just now that as adults i can appreciate him as a man and as a friend and it's a it's a friendship that i hold close to me yeah um so it is funny how life works and you never know what path you're gonna go down it's it's um it's really cool so like i said it, it sucks when you lose a friend but i think being open to new friendships is where you need to be at definitely all right our recap was kind of long. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we had an interesting week. But um, there's two topics that we're going to get into today. Um, I don't know which one to talk about first. Uh, I, forgot, Let's, I forgot the second one. So one oh, I remember them, the second. Uh, talk about the, the last one because I feel like that one's not the craziest thing. Okay. So you mean the being honest with women about what you want. All right. So... <laughs> So on Instagram today, well, this week, and I'm assuming on Twitter, but we're not active on Twitter, but there were like tweets put on Instagram. Um, There were some memes about, before I even get into the memes, I'm going to set the scene. (laughs) So I'm sure we have all heard that, you know, in order to prevent um, miscommunication amongst couples or amongst people talking or people fucking around that you should be upfront and honest about your expectations or about your, what you want out of the relationship going into it. What do I mean by that? If we meet on Tinder, if we meet at a bar, if we meet at a mutual friends gathering and we hit it off, but you know, you don't want a relationship be honest about that. Be like, you know, you were really cool. Nice to meet you. I'm open to mess around, but I'm not trying to have anything serious. Be honest about that, right? How do you feel about that in general? I think it's healthy. Um, I've approached women like that and women have approached me like that before. Right? Like it's healthy. Like, you know, but we all know that in doing that, in being honest about what you want out of the situation you know that the other person might say, well, you know what? I don't really want to waste my time and energy if you already know you don't want this to go anywhere because I'm actually looking for something deeper than that at the moment. And that's also commendable. You know, and that's being real. So 
there was this meme <laughs> about a guy basically saying he tells a girl i don't want anything serious and then the girl walks away and the guy shares it and says this is why i lie to women so basically saying he leads women on he lies about his intentions because he rather get some pussy and then you know her be upset about it then him be honest and then he doesn't even have the chance to sleep with her mm -hmm. so that got me tight <laughs> so what is what are your thoughts on that um i think it's fucked up i'm not saying which I, part is fucked up the his whole view on being honest about what he wants okay. because although the record of him actually sleeping with someone saying being upfront like listen i just want to have sex with you i think you're beautiful that's mm -hmm. it that's that's where it ends for me i don't want any romantic aspect to this mm -hmm. relationship i'm sure that doesn't work it's maybe one out of 20 that it'll mm -hmm. work for him but then he's like you know what if i put a little sauce on it and you know tell them my deepest dreams and say i see a future with them then all of a sudden that number starts to go up i'm mm -hmm. starting to sleep with more women but even though he's lying about even it. though he's lying so his view on that is totally fucked because you're messing with people's emotions mm -hmm. and, you know, it can lead to some negative blowback. The other thing that that was kind of connected to in that same conversation was if all you want. This fucked my head up because <laughs> it's so it sounds what well, she's about to say. It sounds so simple, but it fucks your head up if, when you sit with it for a second. If all you want is sex, why not pay for it? Why not hire someone that that's their job? Well, can you say exactly what the person said? Oh, damn, baby. Well, basically, it was like my new favorite pastime Yes, is when men tell me that they don't want anything serious is for me to tell them, why don't you just go and go pay for sex? And watching and them scream because men get all defensive when you say things like that. And... Although the concept of, you know, we, we've had talks about sex work and mm -hmm. um, things like that. I am here for sex work if it's something that you're doing of your own free will, mm -hmm. if you're doing it in a healthy way. Yeah. But when you think about it, right, you're telling somebody who only wants to have uh, sex with a woman. If you want to do this, why don't you just go pay for someone and then we can remove any feelings. I'm a professional I'm I'm taking care of myself. I'm healthy. Like every there's all these negative um um negative ideas of sex work. It's like oh you'll catch something or mm -hmm. you're it's it's sketchy or whatever. But that's not the case for the most part. There's yeah. women who take care of themselves probably even more so. And you're gonna put, you're gonna use condoms like what the hell? <laughs> and then you also remove this the potential to hurt someone. Yeah. So I I found a tweet um some woman named Josie Pinkins. My new kink is legit legitimately asking men who want sex with no strings or courtship or commitment why they don't why they don't just hire sex workers and watching them explode with anger. Transac transactional sex should be transactional. There are professionals literally trained to provide this service. I fucks with that so heavy. Right? And that made me that led me into this rabbit hole of you know toxic dating culture of men i'm saying men i'm sure it happens both ways um that get literally angry upset infuriated because they feel entitled to sex after they've paid for a date after they drove them home after they paid their uber after they paid for dinner they feel entitled because of the money they spent right so why not guarantee yourself some pussy by just paying for it if if that's what you're expecting if you think spending this money on someone entitles you to sex why not just actually pay for sex yeah so i i view it two ways there's there's the guy who may legitimately like this girl and maybe sees a future with her and still wants to have sex but then you shouldn't be that upset because you're like, all right, this is step one. 
Like yeah. if he really legitimately likes her, right? And then they had a nice ass date and he didn't get any. Not no, it's not a big deal if you feel like you know you're gonna still hang out again, hang out another time. So you're investing. You're, you're you're investing your time into her, and this I'm gonna say this because this is important. A lot of men try to show out too much in the beginning. Expensive dates, expensive restaurants, and it's a lifestyle they can't keep up. And then you're in a relationship with like, you and your I'm girl's broke? like, hello, what happened to these nice dinners? What happened to these nice things? If you genuinely like someone, the expensive shit isn't gonna, isn't what they're looking for. Or just be real, you know, be real with your lifestyle. Yeah. Like if you can't keep up with that, don't. Do romantic dates at the park and picnics and other things. And it's not, it's not to say that you can't do things like that on occasion, but let it be, also be known that this is an occasion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not. Some... Like date number two is going to be a lot more laid back. Yeah. Um, where was I going with that? Totally. I kind of cut it off because I brought up the whole expectations of money. So, yes, my question still was. Why don't, why is it that men just aren't paying for sex more often? Well, at least they probably are. I'm sure these sex workers are making money, but. Yeah, so def they definitely are. But I also think like most things with sex work, it's the stigma. Mm. No one, <laughs> I think I have like one friend who would probably openly admit that, yeah, I just got some pussy from. A sex worker. Yeah, I was going to say a random name, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it's the stigma. Okay. No, you, you want to seem, it's that machismo amongst your male friends or friends in general. It's like, yeah, I got, I got Stephanie. Because of just Because of me, off of nothing else but me. Yeah. This outfit got Stephanie. Oh, God. Um, mm -hmm. Not, oh, I paid Stephanie $100 and she took care of me. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I think it's purely the stigma. I don't know if you But could, I feel like if you're a grown-ass man- with your own money and your own place and your own stuff and you pay for sex, like that's not something you even need to be telling everybody. So <laughs> like, okay, and like So I I think I've mentioned here before, but I used to be a concierge at mm -hmm. a at a high rise building in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I've seen it all. But there was one resident in particular who every night there was a sex worker who showed up. Different, was it the same? Oh, it was different? different sex worker. Maybe you would see the same one on a, like couple a, of like times. on a Monday and a Thursday. But he had a nice rotation of maybe five girls that would come on any given night. Man. And it was just like, that's his thing. And he was um he was in the medical field and you know, out all out all day. Nighttime was his time to come alive. Mm -hmm. And that was his thing. And the younger me at the time was like, what the fuck? I mean, the semi, you know, I was split because it's like, oh, you fucking all these sex workers. But then it's like, oh, he's he's the man. <laughs> um, and now Travis at 33 years old respects that yeah. way more because it's. And he probably didn't have the time to be like trying to find hookups on dating apps and all that stuff. And you he know? did eventually start dating someone. Well, you know, I, I was that. How long was it? Like five years? I think so. I don't I think know. I was doing that. I was a concierge for five years, if I'm not mistaken. And in those years, he was there the whole time I was there. Mm -hmm. He was, um, he started dating someone seriously mm -hmm. and the, the sex workers stopped and there's, you know, I'm being introduced to his girlfriends. Like, make sure, you know, you take care of her. If she needs a key, give it to her. Aww. So he had this two year stretch of fucking sex workers. <laughs> and then I guess something happened. It wasn't one of the sex workers that he, Yeah. it was just another, a, a okay. young lady. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. So to wrap that up, paying for dates, paying for anything doesn't guarantee you sex. And it'd probably be a little cheaper if you calculate yeah. alcohol, dinner, Uber. Room, everything else. Or if you calculate the number of failed attempts you had at trying to buy pussy unofficially by buying, you know. And I, I'm only, and just to be clear. This is only for the people out there who are purely looking for a sexual relationship. And for people who feel entitled to sex just because they spend money on a woman. Like, the only thing that entitles you to another person's body is their consent. That's it. 
So if you're one of those people that feel like, well, if I pay for dinner, I pay for that, I better be getting some. Just buy it, please, because you're kind of sounding very rapey. And seek help. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, you know, you're never too old to learn something new. Yeah. And um, like I said, Travis, 10 years ago's um, outlook on things was way different than my outlook on things now. So mm-hmm. you're never too old to grow and learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And us, you know, in our late 20s and 30s, we're getting too old to have these I didn't know moments, fuck ups. Um, I know we weren't all raised knowing about consent, um, knowing about respect when it comes to sex and women. But we're old enough now to learn and do better. So if we're still being toxic as fuck, it's it's, un- it's inexcusable at this point. Like we're too old. And one more thing for me on that. It's okay to have a sexual relationship with someone if that's what the other person wants. Because I have been approached with that before in my past. And mm-hmm. it's very like transactional in the sense that, hey, how you doing? Good week? Yeah. All right. Take off your clothes. All right. Let's do it. All right. See you next time you hit me up. Oh, my and it, God. And all, it sounds crazy, but that's what that person wanted from me. And yeah. I didn't want, I wasn't. You know, if he anything, wasn't gonna turn it down. Yeah, I wasn't gonna turn it down. If if anything, I might have got more emotional. Like, you sure you don't want to cuddle for a little? <laughs> um, so it it it's okay to do it if you both agree, but yeah. it's not okay to like, um, what's that term? Like gaslight someone into a relationship that they didn't even want from the jump. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, so our closing topic is. Open marriages, open relationships. Dun dun dun. So, um, how did you? How did this come up? You were listening to like a podcast, right? I, I was. It was like a really short clip. Okay. Um, so you, we came across her on horrible decisions. Uh, decisions. <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> um, her name is Shan. Is her name Shan Booty? I think it's Boo Drum, but then she goes by San, Shan Booty. Yeah, so I don't know how I came across it. You know, the YouTube algorithm is weird as fuck. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can't remember if I saw it on YouTube or Instagram. Whatever. Long long story short, she is in an open marriage with her husband. Yes. And um, I was watching a clip of them talk about that. And it was a mind fuck for me because, you know, they're a beautiful couple, Mm -hmm. um, successful and they were just saying they're open. Um, he has friendships with exes. Mm. She she was saying something like, "Yeah, you know, you know, I, I'm talking to a guy now, and you know, some I'll even ask, um, I'll ask him. You think I should send a picture back?" And I'm just like, "So my, she asked her husband if, if she should send a picture. Like the guy she's talking to sends a picture. I'm guessing maybe a promiscuous picture." And she asked her husband, you think I should send something back? Oh, so and she's like asking for his help to flirt with this guy. Exactly. Not a permission question. Yeah, it was but more, more so like, like what do you, you know, think? advice, like your girl, like, like something you ask your girlfriend. Yeah. And obviously most men listening to this right now, my brain was melting. <laughs> um, they did say something I did like about their situation, but I, it, it was short lived. The one thing I did like when they said they had an open marriage was. The fact that she chooses him every morning. Mm-hmm. There's no, you know, sometimes you kind of feel like in some marriages you feel like, or relationships, you feel like it's like a, almost like a, you're forced together. Mm-hmm. There's like, we're not going to be with anyone else. And that's it because we decided we're in a relationship or we decided we're married. There's not no, because we want to be, choose each other every day, but we feel we, we have obligated to. Obligated. Yeah. Or we have kids. Mm. But for them the 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 message that they were trying to put across is that no i choose her or i choose him even though i have these options but what if doesn't like leaving it open now okay now there's a chance they won't choose you because what if someone sweeps Listen. your partner off their feet and like their head over heels and they're like you know what i'm not coming back home listen if you were hoping for some me and steph to be on opposite sides of this you are not going to get that because <laughs> I yeah that's a hard no for me yeah um I kind of put it in for me it's like along the same lines as being a cuck mm. um a, a, 
and I don't. What's a cuck for our friends? And I'm, I'm not a kink shamer, but a cuck is someone who enjoys watching their partner be fucked by other people. Mm-hmm. That's their thing. They'll just sit in this chair and just enjoy the show. I. So then, would you consider me a cuck in a way? No, that's different. That's different. Why? Because we were. That's different. But I'll, <laughs> I'm. Li- you literally have nothing to do with the situation, and it's even. In okay, my, so it's just like literally watching. Just watching. Because I'm like in threesomes, you kind of watch. Yeah, that's different. Okay. Everyone's involved. It's a group assignment. <laughs> Team effort. <laughs> but if you're, you literally just like, oh, hey, nice to meet you, Bob. Like having some tea. My, my wife's in, uh, you need anything? You need, you good? All right, champ, go get her. <laughs> that's, to me, I, uh-huh. it's not my thing. I don't kink shame. Yeah. If you are into that. Yeah. Shout out to you, but it's mm-hmm. not for me. It's like live porn. Yeah, but with the love of your life getting railed out, uh, not my thing. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> so that's it for me. It's along those lines. I are there like live porns? Like, are there like shows where like people perform sex and people watch? Yeah. Okay, I just randomly thought about. That. You want to go? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um. I forget where I was going. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so you're not a cuck, basically. I'm not a cuck, nor am I open to being in an open marriage. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't imagine you like going on a date and I'm just home with the kids mm. and you're like putting your makeup on, looking all sexy and I'm like, all right, babe, see you later. So you said we're not going to disagree. And I don't. I don't want to be in an open marriage. Like, I don't think it's our thing. Like, no. But... A couple of years ago. Oh. <laughs> so what year? How many years ago is that? We were living. Um, this was like 2019. Yeah. So two years, over two years ago. And this was after like our failed attempts at like uh, having a third in our relationship. So my lovely wife. <laughs> oh, my God. Pr- I'm sweating. <laughs> my lovely wife came to me with oh, the, with a I, I don't know how to word it, a suggestion wait are we really gonna say this she asked oh me my God. this guy travis how would you feel if i was dating women i was like what do you mean like like we're gonna we're gonna start doing like a, a thruple again like you want to get back out there no 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 no. just me that wasn't a hundred percent how i said it but okay and i got livid well no no no. <laughs> before i got livid i said oh so like we're both out here dating other people no 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 just me just me you you, you stay home take care of the kids this sounds terrible and i was like uh-huh you, you want to jump in at any moment okay so yes yeah, saying it repeating it like that it sounds terrible like it sounds like i just want to date women and but you can't it just sounds bad but at the moment my thinking was I was still hopeful of us having a, like a thruple type of relationship eventually. But you wanted to go do like uh, research. Yeah, like I felt what's, like what's the word Re- reconnaissance? I don't know. I don't know. If that's it's a word. military term. <laughs> I thought like, well, maybe the easiest way for that to be for that to eventually happen is if I'm dating. Okay. You know, because I wouldn't date like with my family in secrecy like in my head i was thinking that like if i was dating someone they would know that like i had a family <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it sounds terrible now uh you know and that's all good but for me where she lost me uh-huh. was when you said no but you can't okay and, and why do you think that is based on conversations we've had past so episodes what do you think my fear Stephanie, with that is well, I okay. So your fear, well, what are you talking about? You know, sexual sense or yeah. Well, so you've Steph, been with other women. You know, Steph's fear with me being intimate with other women is getting them pregnant. Yes, and it's like my biggest fear ever. As you all know from our river story, I got that super sperm. I just <laughs> my, that's my fear of you dating. Um. So and you know she's bisexual. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking to myself, like, is this the right thing to do? Mm. Is this how I keep 
both sides of her happy oh no that, and that, that w- those those were the thoughts that came across my mind i that, wasn't and it wasn't because i felt like i was lacking anything yeah um and i think i even said so if i was bisexual could i go and start dating guys <laughs> and you know steph is a bit of uh what's the word i'm looking for she she would never date a bisexual man well i just don't think i would no you pretty strongly said you wouldn't but the thing is what if I've dated guys that were bisexual and I just didn't know? Because hmm. I feel like in my <laughs> head, it's like you you assume you would know, but sometimes you don't yeah, know. There's no look. Yeah, there's no like look or attitude or personality or whatever. Or like if you came out as bisexual tomorrow, like I'm married to you. Like, well, well, what are we going to do? <laughs> men together. No, <laughs> I can't handle two I'm men. I'm not bisexual. Men. And but... <laughs> Back to the main point. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't with it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you felt in the moment of like I was visibly upset mm-hmm. at the request. Yeah. What were you thinking? I just I felt like you felt like I was missing something. Like I was unhappy, and that like I might find a woman and like run away or like leave you my family. I, and I mean this in the healthiest way possible. And I, I mean this in the way, like, it's coming from love. I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. I don't see you leaving me. Mm-hmm. I don't. And I hope you don't see me leaving you. Like, I, that's the last thought on my mind. I think that anything that comes to us, we can work it out. We mm-hmm. can get through it. If we are unable to do it ourselves, I think we'll take the approach of even getting help to get through it. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just like the not even on, it's not even an option on the yeah. table of options. Yeah. Um. So that wasn't on my mind. It's just like that for what like, <laughs> for why um yeah and then you know we just got out the the throuple i think maybe like a few months before mm-hmm. you had spoke to me about that and like i've said recently i'm open to the idea of adding a third because mm-hmm. to me that's all of us mm-hmm. we are we are three now becoming one mm-hmm. now, it sounds cheesy but no one's left out yeah um so I'm always down for that, but the fact that it would just be like, yeah, I just imagine you heading out and then coming back the next morning. Like, yeah, I had a great night. I had a great night. Can't wait for you to meet Rebecca. <laughs> Rebecca's getting a lot of shine. Yeah, like you, you picked this name today for <laughs> Rebecca. I hope any of our listeners name Rebecca. We're sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah. What, what do you think about open marriage? So removing our little conversation that we had yeah so the typical definition of it i actually have like the oxford definition and according to the oxford dictionary a marriage or relationship in which both partners agree that each may have sexual relationships with others so i wasn't even being fair (laughs) because technically both of us would have to yeah wikipedia says an open marriage is a form of non-monogamy in which like a typical marriage, right? Two people, they agree that each may engage in extramarital sexual relationships without this being regarded by them as infidelity and consider or establish an open relationship despite the implied monogamy of marriage. Because when you're married, you're implying that it's monogamous, but there are these nuances, I guess, for certain people. Yeah. And although it's not for me, I would never judge anyone who Mm -hmm. does it um just like i wouldn't want to be judged for the fact that we've had threesomes or we would invite a third into our relationship like i wouldn't want to be judged for that i also don't judge anyone who's who has an open relationship i also think that it's important that you're if you're communicating and every both parties are on board completely and it's not one person trying to appease the other Mm -hmm. then i'm i'm here for it but i also feel like both of these definitions is very focused on a sexual relationship outside of your marriage right Mm -hmm. and i feel like my fear with it is like you were you're gonna it's possible that you're gonna have a whole second family you get what i'm saying and then it becomes this weird like you have two households yeah, like situations it morphs into polygamy yeah and polygamy in the sense that it's just the yeah the man has multiple wives and that's like my fear of it because i also think like the same way i fell in love with you and fell head over here for you like i were i'm like so this girl just wants to fuck you and then like she's not gonna want what i have 
Yeah. And like our life and our bubble. Just, just say it. What? You, you can see why someone would fall in love with me. Yeah, well, duh, baby. <laughs> I love you. But you know what I'm saying? Like, even the girl we dated, you guys hung out the, for the first time together. And she was like, Stephanie, I'm, I don't know, but like, like, I can't remember her words, but she basically told me, like, I think I'm falling for Travis. Like, like she's feeling attracted to you and just the person you are. And my first thing was like, I know, bitch. <laughs> like, hello. So I married him. Like, I get it. Um, so that's like my worry. And I feel like selfishly, because as a woman dating another woman, we could never have children, you know? So I feel like it, it, there's like that boundary. Um and maybe like would i would maybe there's like a, a boundary like for example i'm probably dating women who are bisexual too so there's always that like option of us morphing into a family or like a relationship but it's like are you going to be dating women that are like strictly dickly and, <laughs> <laughs> you know and want to fight me fuck me up that's enough where are we talking about that too Talking about like two women being in a relationship or? No, we were talking about how dangerous it could be when you fuck around with people's feelings. Mm. Oh, yeah. Even going back to our previous topic. Yeah. What was the previous? Oh. Uh, about um, like be basically lying to women about what you want out of a relationship. Yeah. Um, and how people become territorial and possessive and kind of scary. We brought it up because um, in New York, there was actually this cop, right? Mm. Um, a, a New York City police officer who shot and killed her ex-girlfriend's new girlfriend and shot her ex-girlfriend out of jealousy and rage, you know? So it's just like, I also think of that when people are unfaithful and like lying to people about emotions. It's like, you never know to what extremes people are willing to go when they're hurt. Yeah. So that's like another part of like, being in an open relationship or even if you are a hundred percent honest and you're being like this is just you know i got my family this is fun they could be like okay okay but then <laughs> throughout time things could change and sh shit could get dangerous quick yeah what's that martin lawrence movie fuck which one fuck. i know people are yelling the, the 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 movie out right now the one where the like he falls in love with this beautiful woman she has a lot of money but then she like gets crazy on him no idea. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like involving other people's emotions, even if the intent is pure and it's honest and it's like, it's just sexual, things change, things progress. And sometimes you don't know what feelings might develop with the person. Yeah, like someone would walk into a situation saying, yeah, I can handle that. Yeah, we can keep it strictly sexual. And then... By the tenth time, it's like you know. I think I love you. Yeah. And it's like whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't. That's not. That's not the goal here. But you yeah. can't. You can't go backwards. Yeah. So it could be very dangerous. Yeah. So what's the consensus? <laughs> consensus for me is it's not my thing. I don't see it becoming my thing. Um, mm -hmm. And nor do I judge anyone who does it. Yeah. Just but, be careful. What's your consensus? You still want to date women? No, I don't have the time. And That's the only reason? <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> no, I just don't think it's for us. Like, it doesn't flow in our dynamic. But is it something that you feel purely because I'm pushing back on it that it's off the table? No, if I look at our dynamic and the things that keep us happy and the way we enjoy being together and, like, our time together... I don't see it being healthy if I'm removing myself to date. Like, I just don't, like we said, we're our end game, let's say, right? Like, we want to be with each other. We don't see, I don't, you said, I don't think you'll leave me, fine. But if I'm leaving the relationship to give time to someone else, it's just going to hurt us. Even if we think it, nothing's going to hurt us, it's going to hurt us, you know? Um. No, I have no intentions on dating. <laughs> None at all. Okay. Okay. And yeah, my consensus is, is, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. Just be careful. That's my biggest thing. Like, don't mess with people's feelings. Be honest. Yeah. 
And the minute things are getting too intense where you can't separate, you know, what it was supposed to be and now it's becoming, get out of the situation sooner than later because it could get dangerous. Big facts. <laughs> I'm all done, baby. All right, baby. Uh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I said, all right, baby. Then let's, I usually start my baby. Okay. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> do you still like me? I still like you. Only me? Only you. You, you sure? I'm 100% You don't sure. need Rebecca? Oh my God, <laughs> poor Rebecca. Peace, y'all. Bye. <laughs>